Hey, Scotty, did you see? We got the new Wilds of Eldraine products. Yeah, I know, I'm really excited. So which one do you want to start with? Okay, let's go with that one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another one of our unboxings for the Wilds of Eldraine. And thank you very much, Scotty, for that introduction. Now, today we are doing a little bit of an offbeat. We are having a look at another one of the starter kits. And yes, this is the one that was released alongside the Wilds of Eldraine. I have not really looked into what cards are inside. I'm just interested to see what you get in here. As usual, if you're new to the series, first off, welcome and second. Secondly, what we do here with the starter kits is we have a look at the decks proper and we don't look at value, but we look at it from the standpoint of a complete beginner and how good these decks are at explaining the rules, how complicated they are. We score each and every one separately and then we give an overall score um, basically to help new players understand if this is better than other starter kits and so on and so forth. So without further ado, let's have a look at the this beautiful box and we have here learn to play magic today you get two ready to play 60 card deck a magic play guide the codes to unlock both decks in mtg arena and two deck boxes and this is printed in the united states so if there are foils which they tend to be it could be that they are bent or pringled but that's the case usually and the decks are going to be selesnia and is it so this is going to be an interesting thing um yeah okay let's get to cracking it i'm trying to see which side we should open it from usually the bottom is the best but it doesn't look like it has a good bottom opening so let's go on the side and see okay so the box opens up as such you have a lot of cardboard <laughs> in any and all shapes and forms so it will pull out like this and like that now, at the top you get the starter kit play guide now let's have a look at this really quickly so it looks like maybe it's a similar one to uh, the one on the Lord of the Rings starry kit. So you get introduced to uh you get inducted into the five white colors of magic, the different contents of this pack an example of the play arena a starting tabletop game um, an explanation of what the battlefield the library graveyard and hand are the tapping and tapping casting combat blocking and uh, attacking um how to read the magic card that's very good then you get the different name mana cost artifacts enchantments etc type uh, text box abilities power toughness so that's good uh then we get the different rarity expansions symbols and then the different phases so that's good so far also, they give you a reminder that you do have some of these cards. And then for the rest, you just have to go online. And this is a problem that we saw in the initial Lord of the Rings starter kit, uh, which I would have hoped that at least the guy contained um, the key abilities that you find on the creatures that are um, inside of at least this set of decks. Because the problem is that um, some of these were not explained on the cards proper, uh, like, for example, flying. Um, so uh it forces players that are completely new to be like oh i don't know what this is and um as we'll see how it goes uh we'll advise you if you should at least play an introductory game uh, with a demo or maybe just have a look at our um guide series on how to play this game and learn to play magic the gathering then we have here one of the container decks um boxes now this is a 60 card deck box but of course it's very tiny and if you're a new player uh you should ask whenever you buy these kind of boxes to get some sleeves even some um transparent ones uh, i would advise you to get a slim fit one so that the perfect fit ones are the best um but just get some sleeves to put in because when you start shuffling the cards you're going to destroy these beautiful cards really quickly as they are made of cardboard and they won't fit in here if you sleeve them um the decks are as such well the boxes anyway that's it really really nice really really cute unfortunately they're not big enough if you sleeve them but that's the case and then we get this starry kit packet now i see that they didn't put any way to 
keep track of life or counters that's fine you can do that on paper but it would have been nice because you do have quite a bit of space to put a dice each here and yeah that's about it and then uh, for the rest you do could have put cut up cardboard counters as well on the, the rest of um, the cardboard so anyway we'll have a look at the decks proper and we will give away the arena code so best of luck to everyone that's watching if you're interested in getting some of these cards we have boonbringer valkyries deck first and uh, yeah if i find a pool tap there it is we go ahead and open it so let's have a look at this wonderful little deck okay now we have boonbringer valkyries a 4-4 angel warrior that costs five with backup and then you get flying first strike and life wing. so this is an extremely complicated card for a new player uh, as i said i'm only going to review this as a new player's experience it i mean if you already know magic the gathering then you should know if a card is good or not uh, based off of these decks and you shouldn't be buying these decks off of value anyway uh looking at this the explain at least what backup is which is when this creature ends his battlefield you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature if that if it's another creature it gains the following ability but it does not go into explaining what flying is what first strike is and what lifelink is so that's annoying let's go on now we get into the trenches or in the trenches cost three it's an enchantment it's an anthem so uh in, a, in magic the gathering anthems are overall board buffs and this buffs you creatures to plus one plus one and then you can spend five, uh, six and exile target no land permanent you don't control until this leaves the battlefield and activate only as a sorcery and only once this is a prison effect as you imprison the target creature or permanent whatever you want to uh, imprison um and it's not that complex uh if you have explained what excel does the problem is that from what we saw in the starter kit actually there's no way to describe destruction and exile so again it's another thing that if you're playing with somebody you have to already know the rules to teach them this kind of thing and it's really annoying because these sorry kids at the beginning were really meant to be uh two completely new players uh who start up and look at the cards all from from scratch so next up we have the silverback elder this is a five seven and costs five whenever you cast a creature spell you choose one destroy target artifact or enchantment again they don't just explain what destroy does look at the top five cards of your library you may put a land card from among them on the battlefield tapped and put the rest at the bottom of the library in a random order and you gain four life okay so these are three complicated cards of course rares and mythics tend to have a bit more stuff on them than just commons and uncommons um as i said the two, these two are self-explanatory the first one is going to be a little bit annoying and they're going to have to google it and also i noticed that some of these cards have a little bit of scratching and denting here at the bottom but that's okay Okay, then we get the Dust Legion Duelist. This is a 2 2 vampire soldier, cost 2, it has vigilance, and whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on it, you draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Again, a very complicated card for a completely new player. You haven't explained what counters are, and uh, so far there have been many cards that do, and this is a little bit annoying um, as such. And then we get the Siege Veteran. This is a 2 2 for 3, it's a human soldier at the beginning of combat in your turn. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control now uh kind of synergizes with that and whenever another known token soldier you control dies known token hey, you create a one one color soldier artifact creature token um i don't remember if they explain tokens in a guide but since i reckon they didn't explain what counters are i would reckon that tokens are not explained as well so that's yet another complicated card and then we get ancient imperial sword this is a six six four seven has convoke at least it's explaining what Convoke does. Then it gets Trample in War 2, which is not explained. And then Ancient Pyrosaur enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters for each creature that has convoked it. So this is a one a plus one plus one. It's like a counters deck um, from, from what I can see. And it's really annoying that you didn't go the extra mile and just explain what counters are inside of the starter kit unless i completely missed it i couldn't find it and then we get the aquarium beast color whenever you cast a creature spell you put a plus one plus one counter on the aquarium beast color whenever it dies you distribute x plus one plus one counters amongst any number of target creatures you control what x is the number of plus one plus one counters on this creature um again counters they're complicated to understand at the beginning and the more there are 
it, the more confusion it can cause for new players. Um, it's not that hard to grasp, grasp the concept, of course, once somebody has explained them, but it can be a bit complicated um, at first. Now, the ones that just give plus one, plus one counters, that's not a problem. But the ones that are like, oh, when this dies, you get to distribute them or even worse, the ones like backup. Um, yeah, that starts to be a bit more complicated for a complete beginner. Again, we're talking about complete beginners. We're not talking about somebody who's already had a couple of games in um, Arena and wants to figure it out from there, right? Now we get Simeon Simulacrum. This is a 2-1 ape that costs three. It's an artifact creature. So you get to see some artifact creatures as well. When it says Battlefield, you put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, and then you can unearth it. At least unearth is a plane. Then we get Recruitment Officer. This is a classic 2-1 that costs one. It's a human soldier. It costs four to do. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from from among them with mana value three or less and put it in your hand and put the rest of the bottom of your library in any random order you get two of these and it's nice because it's i think what is it the second time that you can look at through the library and it's something that is often done in games of magic the gathering so it's important that you get players accustomed to doing this um idea so for now let's say i will divide them in two piles and these piles are going to be the more complicated piles as as it stands and this is going to be the piles of the cards that work really well okay that are great for complete beginner then we get storm the seed core this is a sorcery it costs four distribute four plus one plus one counters among up to four target creatures you control and then creatures you control gain vigilance trample until the end of turn now this is interesting um again vigilance and trample are not explained right and this is the nuisance part and this i'm gonna go and check it out really quickly but in this one right here uh, you don't even have the qr code to scan i, I paid attention this time um that the other one did in the lord of the rings that at least took you to something else which i i didn't check but i would reckon would be a further guide or even just starting to play arena or whatever the, the hell it is so again um people are gonna be like okay what is trample what is vigilance and again you could have just uh skip this as it is very daunting to get into magic the gathering in and of itself especially if you're by yourself so we'll see how it goes so this is unfortunately going to be part of the pile that's not so great for beginners um maybe let's keep it here so you guys can see better uh, and then we get the semite herbalist this is a 2-1 human cleric it costs two when it becomes tapped you gain one life and you scry one it's a splint on the card it's a simple card love it and then we get sigil sentinel is a 2-2 human knight with backup and vigilance uh, again you have not explained what vigilance is unfortunately so it's gonna go this side and of course again with the idea of backup the fact that you give the ability that's underneath it's an extra step of thought process that i'm not thinking you know new players are in any way shape or form unable to grasp this concept it's fairly simple but again when you're thinking about like they have no idea or concept of what a card is what a creature is what a type is what does entering the battlefield do you know all of this stuff and you add an extra layer uh yeah yeah, it's it's really complicated and on top of that the layer is further compounded on the fact that you give an ability that's underneath so um and maybe a, a new player will be like oh okay so the, the ability is this or is it this or is it this right and of course you have to display you know the flavor type no this is the power and toughness so um you need clear-cut ex extremely simple ideas of how to display in the game right so this is uh, the the basic and this is why i'm putting him into the pile of it's not so great for beginners then we get mesa cavalier which is a 2-1 human knight that costs three has flying winners as battlefield you gain two life very nice very simple it comes into play it explains what it does and it does it well and again yes it does have flying as an ability but i'm not going to penalize you necessarily for everything because i understand most creatures do have abilities that you can't explain it's just that 
and you can Google them, is just that if you add a backup on top of everything else, or you have three or four, then it get, starts to get complicated. One is enough. Cooped up, uh, Enchant Minora, it costs to enchant a creature, and the creature cannot attack or block, and then you exile that creature. So this is a um, couple of things that are complicated for a new player, um, namely because who is in control of the aura? Now, we know that it's the opponent that still controls the aura, but um, does this mean that, you know, a new player will be like, okay, you put it on my creature, so it must be that I can activate this. Why would I be able to activate it or not? Uh, but it's you also who can't activate it, right? So the guy that casted it can activate it. So it could add that extra level of confusion. Again, looking at it from a complete beginner side, this is a bit too complicated. Then we get another Mesa Cavalier, another Coop Top, and so on and so forth. Then we get Iridescent Blade Master, 2-2 two, two for 2, Elf Warrior for 4. It gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of turn. Fairly simple, even though plus and plus has to be explained, but, you know, it's a bit simpler than backup, for example. 3-3 three, three, for 4. This creature can be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and it has backup 1. Again, backup 1, I'm going to put it here. Unfortunately, it's not the kind of of ability that's the simplest thing to learn for a complete beginner this is more like it a reach 4 4 4 4 it's got manly goth sentry it's a tree folk it's a simpler one and these are the kind of cards that people would expect as complete beginners then we get giant groove it's an instant so now we start seeing a little bit of instance and you should show a little bit of everything to complete beginners therefore yeah this is one of those those ones that is good um and then you get titanic growth as well so these ones are fine broken wings destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying i will keep it as okay again you have not explained what destroy does or is but you can't really penalize them because in the end this is just a one-time thing and uh yeah you don't have like four or five six other things on top now we get fairgrounds trumpeteer or trump trumpeter and it's a 2-2 elephant that costs three at the beginning of each end step if a plus one plus one counter was put on a permanent under your control this turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on Fairground Grounds Trumpeter. Uh, yeah, no, it's a bit complicated. So yeah, it's a bit complicated to like, try and understand at like phases as a complete beginner. I would not put phases as something that a uh, complete beginner has to worry about. And we'll move forward to this lands, and then we get Blossoming Sands, which is one that enters the battlefield each and or. Uh, so it's kind of one of those dual lands. Um, it's okay. Yeah, it's good to to uh, introduce people to, to dual lands, I guess. Uh, it's a bit annoying, but it's not too complicated. Then we get uh, another one. It's weird. The way that they shuffle them um okay so we get 12 forests and 10 planes now you also get a kind of useless app thingy token which i find really useless and then you get the little reminder of the rules this is very useful and now you get the code best of luck to whoever gets it now let's have a look at the red one or the is it one this is the tyrant of carriages on the front we'll have a way to remove this real quick voila and we are going to have a look at the tyrant of carriages to be fair the pringle is pretty okay on the main cards uh this is a dragon and it's a four five four six it has flying and whenever it enters the battlefield this fuller damage to any target and then you can plus one plus zero it until the end of turn now this is a simpler one that is the battlefield dearest damage nothing else to do again yeah Yes, you're playing fine, but um, on the more complicated side of things, I think it's okay to keep. It's not a big one. Oh my god, you put Sark on here? Okay, this is a 2 4 human shaman that costs three, and dragon spells you cast cost one generic last to cast. That's already too complicated for people to understand most of the time. It's a complete beginner, <laughs> mainly because it's like, oh, it's one, uh, one less. So, I if it's like three red pips, then I, I, it's gonna cost two. No, it's not, but again. If you are two completely new players that want to start learning together, um, this is not the card for you. Then whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, may I have it, this card become a copy of it until the end of turn, except its name is the Well of Sarkhan, and it's legendary in addition to its other types. No, 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 no. Too complicated. It's a great card. I mean, if you're looking for value, I guess, and you didn't want to open uh, um, the, the aftermath, uh, then yeah, it's great to get for this, but no, 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 no. For a complete beginner, absolutely 
not. Now we get Shiv and Devastator. So you start to see an axe here and then uh, one and then it's a zero zero dragon. Hydra has flying and haste and it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Again, same thing as the other deck. It's a bit too complicated right away. And on top of that, you have both flying and haste that are not explained. Then we get a rage fire. Hellkite is a five three that costs six, has flying whenever it attacks. You may sacrifice another creature. If you do, it gains double strike until the end of turn. If you don't explain your dragon double strike this is really complicated unfortunately and on top of that again you're you're here you have too many interactions again you, when you're playing with new players you want cards that do one or maybe two things but here you have uh you can sacrifice here you have flying you then can get double strike which is yeah too many things then we get ether channeler is a two one human wizard it costs three whenever it enters the battlefield you choose one okay create one 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 white bird creature token with flying return another target non-land permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card uh yeah i guess i mean this is not it is a lot of things you have to choose only one though it's not three things concurrently um it's still a bit too complicated for a complete beginner then we get ingenious prodigies a zero one human wizard it costs x and a blue you skulk this creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power okay and then it enters the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it and then at the beginning of your upkeep if this card has one or more plus one plus one counters on it you may remove a, a counter from it to draw a card no way to come dragon wing glider and this is a five coster artifact equipment with four meriden when this equipment enters the battlefield you create a plus um you create a two two red rebel creature token then attach this to it now equip creature gets plus two plus two has flying and haste and you can equip it it's a bit too um complicated for a complete beginner uh godric cloaked reveler this is a great card for drafting actually funny enough this this is a 3-3 human noble that costs uh, 3 and has haste and celebration. Now celebration is already very tricky to try and explain to a complete beginner. As long as two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under control this turn, then Godric, it becomes a dragon and yeah, it's too complicated. Now we got Golgan Warmonger. It's a 3-2 ogre warrior that costs 3, has haste and whenever it attacks you look at the top 6 cards of your library, you may reveal a dragon card from among them, put it in your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order i'm gonna say yes this is fine even though it's quite a little bit of text it's good because it's really clear you explain every step at every part of the way now we get archive dragons the four six with flying has a six cast it has war two and one answers battlefield use cry two uh, at least you're explaining what war does um yeah it's okay um uh, scry two you don't explain it though so that's no that's a big no call again again then the archive dragon again if you're displaying as well what cry 2 did then we be peachy then we go with dragon whelp it's a 2-3 dragon that costs 4 has flying for 1 red gets plus 1 plus 0 until the end of turn if this ability has been activated 4 or more times this turn you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step uh, that's cute the poor guy cannot be overpowered otherwise he'll die anyway um, yeah it's fairly simple self explanatory uh, in the grand scheme scheme of what these two decks are trying to explain anyway now which soccer frenzy is an instant cost four this spell costs one dragon less to cast for each creature that attack this turn and then it deals five damage to target creature again it's too much information on the card for people to try and figure out when i'm a complete beginner and i'm having to keep track of so many things it's just frustrating and then we get shivan branch burner is a four four that costs seven has combo fine haste too many things quick study this is simple it's an instant it costs three do you draw two cards absolutely good then we get storm cal prowler is a two one that costs two whenever you cast a spell with mana value five of or greater you put two plus one plus one counters on it um it's a bit on the complicated side but not overly um if if the mana value is well explained in the guide then this is an easy card and if not then this is a hard card i will assume that this is a hard card uh, mainly because you're you want to keep it simpler but you know if it's explaining the guy better than the side stasis field enchantment or cost two enchanted creature enchanted creature has base power and toughness zero two as fender and loses all 
abilities. Again, you're giving them a lot of abilities and you're not explaining what they do. So this is a no, no. Then we get a lightning strike. Very simple. It's an instant deals three damage to any target. It's very nice. Actually, we haven't seen a lot of sorceries um, and we only saw one artifact in the other one. I'm hoping to see some sorceries here because at least you're explaining the different speed of things. Um, that is something that's really important in magic and uh, the other deck would not have been able to do that. And then we get the rock hunter is a three one with reach. It costs two. Very simple. And then we get another lightning strike, another rock hunter, another lightning strike, and then left water clefts. And we got four of those. So at least unlike the Lord of the Rings deck, which one had dual lands and one didn't for some reason, this one they both do. And then you get 11 islands and 11 fountains. Then you get the same things and you also get the code. Best of luck to whoever gets this. Now, let's review the whole kit and caboodle. Um, I honestly believe that these products are definitely not play tested with complete beginners, right? So maybe they're play tested with the idea of I have somebody that's going to explain the two players that are going to be playing how to play the game. And then that works out really well. Um, but if you're just one player to another, even if you're a completely well-versed player, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can easily teach somebody, your friend, how to start the game because, well, there are a lot of things to keep into consideration and you need really need to have practice quite a bit in in the teaching manner and and in how certain things are more complicated than others when you're starting off now if you're just started off let's say a month ago or two months ago and you've learned uh just recently and then you want to get your friend in then yeah you can explain it probably fairly easily because you can try and get them through the same process even though people think in different ways and different pathways in the, in, the, in the brain but that let's not get too complicated here um the main idea is if you're a well-versed player and you want to get a completely new beginner into the game, you're going to struggle to try and explain this stuff very easily unless you've done it very often. And um, this kit should, in any and all circumstances, be able to explain itself. It, this guide should be much thicker and should have everything that is not on the cards explained here. Therefore, and this was uh, up until I think 2015 and or even 2017, this was the base of Starry Kids. And Starry Kids, you even had a, a, a glossary uh, at the end um, and an appendix and stuff like that. And you could always check all the things that were necessary to play. So if you had put everything in a Starry Kit and I don't have to Google what X and Y does while I'm in the game, which is fairly annoying to do uh, because, you know, Google then doesn't really explain in necessary, easy to understand plain English terms because it's just, you know, probably the first few links are Wikipedia links and they're well explained, not for beginners, but for players that really want to know their stuff. Um, so if you had put everything in here, then I would have no worries to tell you, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't matter how complicated the cards are because you've explained it all in here and all it takes for them is a couple of takes. Now, given that you haven't then therefore i'm gonna have to score these now um this is gonna be a four out of four, ten uh mainly because this is just too complicated with a backup ability and you have so many abilities and on top of other abilities okay so it's a great deck but this is um not a concept that's easily understood for new players so definitely this is a four out of ten this one i would say it's a bit easier to understand. It's a bit more in the face. There are still complicated cards, but not as many. I would say let's 5.5 out of 10. Let's let's give it a five, a decent 5.5, okay? 5.5 is the fair amount to give this. I wish I could bring you back to back when, you know, the Starry Kiss were invented around Portal, even Portal, if you ever heard about the Portal expansion, those were really created for getting new players and, and cards in the Starry Kits and the Starry decks had extra space and explanation for things that were not explained so what you should have done here is what we said in the lord of the rings decks is either put everything in a star kit guide or add extra lines of text and keep simpler cards in because again yes it's great that you can of course um have some decent cards to eventually once you get up speed play a bit better and not feel like you're so behind and of course people are going to maybe go into standard and then they realize that actually standard rotates and they're going to go to commander straight away and this is going to try and become a um, i don't know a dragon deck and uh they're going to cry to see the prices of dragon 
seconds anyway. Uh, but um, yeah, the main idea is it's too complex as is. And what I believe Wasi should do, and you know, if Wasi, if you do get this idea, uh, do give me some credit, <laughs> um, that uh, you should have a basic intro kit, right? Um, that is very similar to your demo kits that you have handed out to all the stores. And it's just a 60 card deck of that. And it's very simple. And then you also give an extreme amount of glossary and upgrade on all the more common abilities that you will find in these kits in here and hear me out then you create an upgrade kit and there you go you make twice the money um for the starter kit right so once you grab the starter kit and you can play it and you know all the rules of that you have i don't know an advanced kit or whatever you want to call it I, I would say yeah it's best to have an extra updated guide that has now all the other things that are inside and then from there the player will be able to take a leap and say okay you know what now I, I feel fairly confident. I'm going to jump into other formats or play online and so on and so forth. Um, and that would be a great idea. So, hey, you hear me out. Anyway, uh, otherwise, looking at a face value of what this is, this is too complicated. I think overall, this is even more complicated than the Lord of the Rings deck. And for those decks, we had given them a 5 out of 10. So for this one, it's going to be a 4 out of 10, unfortunately, uh, because you're complicating things even further. You're not showing where artifacts are, what sorceries are, what enchantments are. Um, and you're just, yeah, I mean, I understand that you maybe want to make the decks fun. The problem is, again, who are they aimed at? Who is your target audience? Yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for this review. What do you think about these starter kits? Have you tried to get some of your friends to play and uh, maybe bought one of them and, uh, yeah, well, just gotten into it and found it complicated or easy? Are we wrong? Um, just let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you do get any of the codes, do let us know in the comments down below. And in case you're interested in learning how to play Magic the Gathering and you're wondering where should I start, there are a lot of complicated resources outside, but I'm a complete beginner. And really, I just want the simplest way to learn and the quickest way to get into and play with my friends. Well, look no farther than here. We've already made a playlist for a complete beginner on how to play the game so click on that if you want to start learning we're going to run you through all the basics of the game and even show you a demo game with the previous starter kit where we explain the game to another complete beginner and that should help you get you along and start in the game so without further ado Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one. From Scotty and I, we wish you a lovely day, a blessed day. Be good, be kind, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!